Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here with a special video for you. Today, well, it's something of a Mythbusters episode. Some time ago, a video was posted uh, by Scotty Kilmer about putting lacquer thinner into your gas tank to repair a faulty catalytic converter. It just so happens I have my 1997 uh, Subaru Legacy and it has not one but two bad catalytic converters which we proved in the diagnosing a PO420 uh, video. I'll post the link in the description to that. A lot of people when they see a PO420 want to go for the O2 sensors. Um, in fact, they usually immediately replace, well, I'm not going to say usually. Many times they just uh, go ahead and replace those O2 sensors in hopes that that cures the problem. Uh, I would urge you to watch the video that I did on the diagnosis of catalytic converters. Uh, there are methods that you can use, including just plugging in a scan tool to see if the O2 sensors are indeed at fault uh, with a PO420. In my experience, if you get a PO420, the most likely cause is that you have a bad catalytic converter. And sometimes your replacement converter may be at fault because it might not meet the standards that were set about by the manufacturer for the converter and therefore it will continue to set that code. We're going to leave all that aside today because, as I said, we're going to go through sort of a myth-busting episode. Now, it's been said that uh, if you put lacquer thinner into your gas tank, uh, that it could possibly uh, repair a faulty catalytic converter. Now my catalytic converters in this Subaru are not clogged. I don't believe they are. They just aren't functioning efficiently like they're supposed to. Please watch that video and you'll see that. So I think this is a prime candidate. That's reason number one I think it's a prime candidate. Number two is because let's just say this car is a disposable car for me meaning that uh, I can drive that element home if this thing leaves me stranded. Basically what lacquer thinner is it is a, uh, well, it's, it's sort of a blend of solvents. It's not any one thing. It is petroleum based, so it should mix with the gasoline okay and just fine. By no means in this video am I advocating that you need to do this. I am falling on my sword so that you don't have to. If I ruin something in the fuel system or damage something in the engine in the attempt of this, well, we've got some videos to do after the fact. If you ruin your main car that's getting you back and forth to work, please don't blame me for that. I'm trying to either debunk or show that, you know, this, this is something that actually can work because let's face it, catalytic converters are expensive. If you need to replace one, it's going to set you back. So if you can do something as simple as dumping lacquer thinner into your gas tank and the problem is solved, well, hey, you know, hey, you know, it's, it's worth a shot, I think. Uh, in addition, uh, to, in Scotty's video, which I'll also post a link to in the description, he also mentions uh, removing the catalytic converter from the vehicle entirely and cleaning it out with soap and water. I consider that a much more viable option for the most part, mainly because the soap and water is not going to harm any components in your fuel system or anything else. It's probably a much safer way to go. However, you're going to have to deal with removing that catalytic converter and dealing with old rusty exhaust fasteners. Well, that may prove challenging. For me, I think this is a perfect opportunity to try this method. Now, I have a quart or 946 milliliters of lacquer thinner here. My gas tank is a little over half full, somewhere around three quarters full. I believe my tank is somewhere around 13 gallons. So I'm going to dump this whole quart into this uh, gas tank and then I'm going to take it for, well, quite a lengthy drive, about an hour's worth each way. So I'm going to put two hours worth of time and probably burn through most of this gasoline doing it. When we're all said and done, we'll bring it back into the shop, we'll retest our catalytic converters and see if we had any, any effect on them, if we were able to clean them and get them to work again. Let the experiment begin. Yep, it is the lacquer thinner. Just gonna put the whole thing in. I know some of you are probably cringing at that. My drive is approximately 200 miles. We'll come back, we'll recheck the catalytic converter, see where we're at. Just to give you an update, uh, I've just passed over about 100 miles. I've experienced no difficulty whatsoever. Uh, I've gone through about a quarter of a tank. 
uh, from from what I started with. But performance-wise, everything it's going fine. I'm not I'm not experiencing any problems. I don't feel like the car is going to die. Any of that stuff it seems to be running just like normal. The real test will be when we uh, check the O2 sensors and more importantly check the temperatures of the catalytic converters and compare that to what we had before and see if there's been any improvement. I'm half thinking that I might want to run this tank all the way through before I make a final assessment uh, just because then I know that, that all of that lacquer thinner had been run through. As it is today, I might get a little more than 100 miles out of this, uh, well no, about 200 miles out of this trip and that's not going to be my entire tank so I may run it all the way to the end and then do my final checks then. So far, so good. We'll see. Okay, we're back at the shop. Um, put about 170 miles on it. I've got it down to about a quarter of a tank. So I would say in all fairness, I've burned about a half a tank. I'm just gonna see if this made any difference. Now, the tests or checks that I'm about to show you are actually covered more in depth in the PO420 video that I did, which I'll post a link to in the description for you. But uh, these checks that uh, I'm gonna do here now, uh, hopefully with the prove or disprove that we had any effect at all. I'm wondering if it's gonna be immediate, if it's gonna be something that's over time, uh, if I'm gonna have to run the rest of that gasoline through this with the lacquer thinner in it to find out if it had any effect. It's all very scientific. Let's, uh, let's take a look at our data. Okay, I'm going to, this uh, has two O2 sensors, one in the front. This is the one up by the engine and this is the one behind the uh, catalytic converters. Now, uh, the idea is to look to see if the secondary O2 remains somewhat steady. That's what we're looking for. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, primary O2 sensor and we want to see rapid switching. But I'm going to raise the RPMs to about uh, 2,000 or so. Now it looks like, well, maybe there has been some change. We still have some fluctuation on the secondary O2, but I actually think it's less than it was before. This might have had an effect. Let's uh, take the catalytic converter's temperatures and uh, see if that's true. All right, I've got the throttle locked off at about 3,000 RPM. I'm gonna go check the temperature in the front of the back of both of the catalytic converters and see what we got. And we're back. It's uh, almost down to the end of the tank, and the it's, it's gone about 200 miles total. So I'm pretty sure that I've run the lacquer thinner or the majority of it through the system. And you know what? I've noticed no change. I found no change in in the catalytic converters, or they they haven't gotten any better as a result of adding the lacquer thinner. Now, once again. That could be that I didn't necessarily use the, the correct proportions, uh, but something else has come up, which is I now have a check engine light. And the code that I have is a uh, P1400, which on a Subaru is the fuel tank pressure control solenoid low input, is what this, what this code is for. Now it is a little odd that I get a fuel system code shortly after uh, putting that in there, putting that lacquer thinner in the tank. However, I don't think those two things are related. I did some reading on the internet about it, and it's more likely to be a problem with some corroded wires. We've seen the underside of the Subaru, and we know basically what kind of shape it's in, and it, and it is pretty corroded under there. So if it is, 
a wiring issue, we can look into that perhaps in another video. Uh, but as far as this goes, uh, whether or not it was affected by the lacquer thinner, um, I'm going to say probably not. It's just a coincidence. However, I do have a check engine light now that I did that. So, the conclusion. Is uh, putting lacquer thinner in your gas tank going to repair your catalytic converters? In my case, the answer is no. Catalytic converters can fail in more than one way. It's, they don't just fail in one way. They could, the, the internal substrate could get super hot and melt, uh, causing it to clog up, or maybe there's some external damage or a misfire or something that causes the, sub, the substrate to break up. Uh, and if that's the case, if you have physical damage to the catalytic converter, putting anything in your gas tank or trying to clean it in any way is not going to help it. it. It's damaged. That's it. It's done. The, the philosophy behind all this, I guess, is to get any of the crud that's on the substrate of the cat catalytic converter cleaned off so that you, you get to expose what's underneath and therefore it works efficiently again. I believe that's the premise of doing this. Lacquer thinner in the gas tank, for me, didn't work at all. So you could take that with a grain of salt. If you want to try it, go ahead, but personally, I'm not so sure that it's going to work out for you. With all due respect to Scotty Kilmer, I just, I, I wanted, I was curious myself, and this Subaru presented the perfect chance, the, the ideal opportunity to test the theory. We knew we had bad catalytic converters from the P0420 video that I did. So we, we knew we had a vehicle that, that could possibly benefit from trying this. So I tried this so you wouldn't necessarily have to. My experience, it didn't work out. I'm gonna wrap this up now because I think this, this pretty much closes it out. Uh, at some point, perhaps we'll look into the P1400 code. Not real sure, the Subaru is reaching the end of its life for me. So we'll, we'll see how much longer we're gonna keep it around. If you have automotive questions, I would ask that you head over to ericthecarguy.com. There's a welcome video there that tells you about all the wonderful features we have to help you solve your automotive issues. And perhaps you can get an answer to your question right then and there. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. And I close each of my videos with, be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. See you next time.